Now let's say I have to calculate factorial of a number using recursion. So talking about factorial of a number, n factorial is equivalent to n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus 3 till 2n1. So if we have to calculate something like 5 factorial, then 5 factorial will be equivalent to 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Similarly, 4 factorial is equivalent to 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. 3 factorial can be written as 2 factorial as 2 into 1, 1 factorial is 1 and 0 factorial is also 1. Okay, now if we come back here, then 5 factorial is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Can we see that if we combine these four multiplications, we can write 5 factorial as 5 into 4 factorial right similarly here if I see 4 factorial can I write 4 factorial as 4 into 3 factorial similarly here can we write 3 factorial as 3 into 2 factorial here we have 2 into 1 factorial so 1 factorial itself 1 0 factorial is 1. This cannot be further subdivided. So what I am trying to say here is that in order to know 5 factorial, we need to know what is 4 factorial. Or for that matter, if I know 4 factorial from beforehand, I can calculate 5 factorial. And for calculating 5 fact 4 factorial, I need to know 3 factorial. And for 3 factorial, if I have 2 factorial already with me, I can simply calculate 3 factorial. So if I generalize this particular thing, generalize this particular thing for n factorial, I can write n factorial is equal to n into n minus 1 factorial, right? So n factorial is equivalent to n into n minus 1 factorial when we have n greater than 1. For n equal to 0, and n equal to 1, we have n factorial as 1. So as I talked about base condition there, so base condition is something which terminates the recursion or for that matter base condition is something for which you know that what is the value you have to return. So here for n equal to 0 and n equal to 1, we know that the factorial will be 1. So Whenever you are trying to write a code in recursion, first try to come up with this kind of relation. This is known as recurrence relation. Try and come up with this kind of relation. If you are, if you have come up with this kind of relation, it becomes really easy to solve a recursive problem or to write a recursive code. Now, one more thing as you can see here is that, how do I know that I have to use recursion? Right? This is also an agenda that how do I know that I have to use recursion. So in this case, what is happening is that we have a big problem and a big problem can be solved with the help of a sub problem. And this sub problem can further be solved with another sub problem and this can be solved with another sub problem. And the way of solving all these sub problems are exactly same. It's just that the parameters will be changing. So here, if my sub problem, if my problem is 5 factorial, here my problem will be 4 factorial. Sub problem will be 4 factorial. Here it will be 3 factorial. Here it will be 2 factorial. And here now we come to a place where our sub problem cannot be further divided, which we make as our base condition, which is 1 factorial or 0 factorial. Now for calculating 2 factorial, we need to know 1 factorial. So as soon as we know what is 1 factorial, we give this value to 2 factorial. 2 factorial calculates the value. And then we give it to 3 factorial. 3 factorial gets, gets calculated. 
This value is used by 4 factorial and this value is used in calculating 5 factorial. So we have a big problem that is getting solved by sub problems. So in such scenarios when you have a big problem that can be solved by small uh, sub problems where the method is same, the lines of code will be same, it's just that the parameters will change. You know that you have to use recursion and also try to come up with this kind of relation. If you come up with this kind of relation, it becomes really easy to write the recursive code. So in this case, let's say I have written this particular relation. Let's see how can we go on to write the code. So as we saw in the last slide, we can write factorial as, so let's say I name my function as factorial, okay? So we can write that factorial of n is equal to factorial of n minus 1 into n for n greater than 1 else we have for n equal to 0 and n equal to 1 we have factorial of n is equal to 1. Now whenever you are writing a recursive function Obviously, first you will write the name of the function. You should know that what it is going to return. So here we are returning the factorial. Okay. So we can write the function as int fact. We need to know what are the parameters that we are going to pass. So here till the discussion so far, we think we'll be only passing the n. Okay. Whose factorial has to be calculated. Now, we write down the base condition if we know the base condition so here we know that the base condition is if n is equal to 0 or n is equal to 1 we simply return 1 now if n is equal to 0 or 1 we return 1 else we return this particular relation we return n into fact of n minus 1 right so let's see whatever we have written is uh, is it giving me the right answer and let's see how the function call happens and things go so now we have returned the function in fact now let's see how the subsequent calls are made let's say we are taking n equal to 5 so when we are seeing how the subsequent calls are made we are use we will be using stacks and also we will keep track of several things so whenever we are making call we will keep track of several things so initially let's say the fact 5 is the first function to be called right so we will keep track of n which is 5 in this case and we will also keep track of the return value that it is receiving so for that matter fact 5 is equivalent to we know that fact 4 into 5 right for getting 5 factorial we need to know fact 4 right 4 factorial so here return value is the value that fact 4 is returning so basically this return value is nothing but fact n minus 1 which is this so we are keeping track of two things one what is the parameter that we are passing and number two what is the return value that we are getting from fact n minus one okay so initially when we are making the calls we don't know the return value we will fill it after the return value is returned from fact n minus one so let's start making the calls so initially we have fact five n equal to five okay and then we have fact four which gets called n is equal to 4 so here we keep track of the return value fact 3 okay so we will see what we get as fact 3 and then we have fact 3 n is equal to 3 then we have fact 2 then we have fact 1 and then we have fact 0 
Now this fact 0 returns 0. So here if n is equal to equal to 0 or n is equal to equal to 1. Okay, so we missed a point here. So here when we do this fact 1, as soon as we do fact 1, our n becomes 1, right? And when we come here, we, the condition becomes true if n is equal to equal to 0 or n equal to 1 or n is 1. So 1 is returned. Now this 1 is returned to which particular function? The calling function. And what was the calling function? Fact 2. Fact 2 called fact 1. Right? So now here for fact 2, we needed fact 1. So fact 2 was equivalent to 2 into fact 1. Right? So now fact 1 has already given me 1. So now fact 2 will calculate this 2 into fact 1 which is 1 into 2 and this 2 will be returned to fact 3 which in turn wants fact 2 to calculate fact 3. So fact 3 had something like n into fact 2 right. So this fact 2 will be replaced by the value that fact 2 has returned which is 2 and here is 3. So 3 into 2 is equal to 6. Now this 6 is returned to fact 4. Fact 4 had called fact 3, right? Fact 4 gets the value of fact 3. Now 4 into fact 3 which is 6 is calculated and that is returned to fact 5. So return value goes on to be 24. Now fact 5 calculates 5 into 24 which is 120 and this 120 is returned to the main function or whoever calls the function right and if we have to print we print this 120 so this is how the calls are made first the function calls are made and then eventually the functions start returning the values so this is how whenever you are understanding a function Whenever you are understanding a function, you have to take care of several points. You have to track several parameters. So I'll tell you how do you go on to understand a recursive problem. So what happens is that you, whenever you are understanding the recursive problem in the between, in the beginning, you have to do these operations for, for the clear understanding. Else the understanding remains not, uh, you know, becomes not sufficient. 